So um, before we dive into the topic, I was wondering if um, each of you could just tell us a little bit about yourselves, who you are as a writer, what you write, um, and what brought you to this genre. Um, Sashni, we can go with you first. Oh, okay. So my name is Sajani Patel. I'm a fellow Texan right here in Austin, Texas. I wrote The Trouble with Haiti New, um, which is kind of a, a, a woman's fiction, romantic comedy. And what got me into the genre, I wasn't really expecting to get into romance. I sort of started a story. I had a character in mind and it just kind of developed into romance. And so I think every story should have something that's a romantic element. It just makes it more interesting, I think. Yeah, Tracy, how about you? Um, my name is Tracy Wolf, and I have been writing romance. My first romance novel came out in 2008. So I have written between romance and YA romance. I've written my 65th one just came out. My 66th comes out in September. My newest one is called Crave, and it is, there we go. And it is a, well, our goal was to bring vampires back. So it is a YA vampire romance. And um, yeah, that's, that's, that's me. awesome. Cool, thank you so much. Um, and although this session is mainly about romance, you both also write women's fiction. And so I was wondering if we could, if you could just give us like how you distinguish between the two, because I think sometimes people aren't sure if they're writing women's fiction or romance or both. Um, so uh, Saki. Well, women, women's fiction and YA romance have Thing and why in general have something in common. It's about the journey of the heroine mm -hmm. as opposed to the journey of the couple. Romance is the journey of the couple, whereas women's fiction, no matter how many romantic elements it has in it, very often most YA, no matter how many romantic elements it has in it, tend to be about the journey of the character and how that one character specifically takes it. Right, yeah. Sasha, do you have anything to add? Oh, well, that's basically it. Women's fiction is... Um, I think we call it women's fiction because by default we have men and all of this stuff that they write. So we have to differentiate and we shouldn't have to, but we do to say that this book is about a woman's journey and it's about female characters and whatever it is that the, the female in the book is going through. But, you know, women's fiction can also have subgenres just like romance. Well, as such as romance. <laughs> yeah. Um, and I like that you're, Tracy, you write, like you're writing paranormal romance and Sajani <laughs> is more rooted in reality. Um, and so I'm wondering also like when you have, um, sorry about that. And in each of your bios, what I found really interesting was Tracy, you, um, you write, you like writing tortured heroes. Um, and Sajani, you talk about writing tortured love stories. And so I really found that theme really interesting. And for me also, when I'm reading romance, my favorite ones are the ones where there's like a lot of angst and just like, you know, you're not really sure if they're gonna get together. Um, and so there are also a lot of tropes in romance that um, I think are, it's really easy to fall into. <laughs> You know, that doesn't mean also that you completely have to stay away from them. So I'm wondering if um, each of you could just talk a little bit about the tropes that you enjoy writing about or reading about, and also maybe some pitfalls that come with those tropes. Um, yeah, so, oh, did you want to go first, Tracy? No, I didn't think you go ahead. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> um, I'm not really a trope person. I, for the longest time, I was like, what's a trope? And then I, you know, started seeing tropes around, like, oh, your book is this trope and that trope. And I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> so I don't really uh, pick a trope first. I just have like a character or a scene in mind and it all just kind of develops around that. And um, I, yeah, there's obviously tropes and everything. So I end up having two or three different tropes, but that wasn't my focus and that wasn't my intention. Right. Um, and I forgot the rest of your question <laughs> already. <laughs> And so, like, how do you, um, what's your writing process when you're, like, getting ready to start writing? What comes to you first? Oh, usually the character or some type of scene comes to me first. And sometimes a conflict comes first, and the story uh, revolves around that. It evolves from that. Um, I don't plot. I just kind of go by the seat of my pants and see where the story takes me. And actually, this last book that I, that I wrote, um, which is the next in the series, I was stuck in the middle and I tried brainstorming, I tried um, storyboarding it out, trying to write the plot and I couldn't uh, do anything, I couldn't move forward. So what I ended up doing was 
the ending came to me. So I wrote the ending and I worked chapter by chapter backwards until I met my middle points. And I don't recommend that, but that's how this book had to be written. Cool. And Tracy, what about you? Um, so well, I talk about my process, but oh, tropes, right? Tropes is the first half of that question. Um, in romance, they tend to always say that there are tropes and some romance writers can, you know, you know, reel them off easy, easy peasy. I have, I've never been one either. Um, you, you said we like tortured heroes and tortured love stories. And I think that the reason that always works so well in romance in general is because the reward is a lot sweeter if you have to work for it, right? And I think that readers really appreciate that because the payoff feels so much bigger, right? If everything was easy, I mean, what's the, what's the point? <laughs> what's the yeah. point of reading it, right? I mean, uh, the ups and downs are kind of, like in any story, right? Whether it's romance or otherwise, the ups and downs are what keep you, keep you interested in the plot, the twists and turns. Um, as for tropes, I mean, I can reel off some for you, like enemies to lovers or friends to lovers. Mm. Um, I will tell you, like, friends to lovers, I hate to write because I think it's the hardest thing in the world. I love to read them, but it's super hard because what is that thing that moves you from friend to lover, right? It's a, yeah. it's a huge thing. Um, but but there, are, there are a million of them. I, uh, I don't tend to go into my books thinking, oh, I want to do this trope or that trope. I tend to go in with character. In fact, um, I have a good friend of mine who I brainstorm with, who's also an Austin author, or a couple of them, and they always go in, um, kind of like what Sachin was talking about, through conflict, right? Mm -hmm. Like they have the conflict come to them, and then they kind of build the story around that. And I'm terrible, because when we brainstorm, this is what it sounds like. So who is she? So what is she doing? So who is she? And then my friends always say, what is she doing? And, and we go back and forth. And I actually, if I can't identify with the character, I can't come up with a scenario to put them in. Um, it's actually, I think, harder that way, because um, usually, yeah, you find the central idea in the conflict and you build out from there. But for me, until I know who I'm dealing with, I can't write anything else. I just kind of get stuck. Yeah, and I like that you say and that. I'm not after. Yeah, I'm um, sorry. Sometimes a little bit. You're, you're going like in and oh, out. Sorry. So if you could maybe speak. Oh, no, I'm using a hotspot and everything because my Wi-Fi is not great right now. Something happened in my neighborhood and our wife. So I'm on a hotspot. I'm sorry. I was hoping that would help. Um, so. Anyway, so I'm half hamster and half plotter, um, where I have a general idea going in, and then I don't have a plot for a long time. Then about a third of the way through, I start saying, oh, hey, okay, now I know what's happening. And then I kind of stop and plot and figure things out. Yeah. Sorry about the Wi-Fi. Oh, that's okay. Don't worry about it. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so I really like what you were saying about, like, needing that conflict and how it makes it sweeter, because I do think that What's interesting about romance too is that you know that they're gonna end up together. You know, like that's that's the the whole the whole book. And so what's really hard is making readers understand like, but there are obstacles in place and you want them to like kind of worry, like maybe they're not actually gonna get together. And so do you have any tips for writing, you know, that middle part? <laughs> <'Cause> <laughs> I don't have any tips. <laughs> In that sagging middle that we all hate to write. Um, what do you think, Sajani? Um, uh, I, okay, I, I hear a lot of people say that, that they like to plot. And although I don't plot, um, storyboarding helps me out. So like literally drawing things like um, this is what's going to happen here and just so, so many random things. And so I will type out every scene, every dialogue, everything that comes to me that I think sound neat in this book. And of course I can't fit everything in there, but what I end up doing is creating a puzzle. So I fit these puzzle pieces together and I see if they work. If not, then I, I try to um, mesh them together with something else. But I would say just write any and everything that comes to you and then see if anything fits. <laughs> um, the way I, I always say, have too much conflict and too much plot. I think the harder your conflict is, the more unsolvable your conflict is, the easier it is to not have a sagging middle. Because you have so much that you have to get through that to get to that happily ever after, that there's always, there's always more to do. There's always another twist, there's always another turn. So I think the more unsolvable the conflict is, 
I mean, that's really hard on you as a writer because then you're like, how, the, how do I solve this? <laughs> um, this is bad, how do I, how do I fix this? Um, but the more unsolvable it is, the easier it is to not have a sagging middle. And then I also think the more plot you have, and I don't mean throw in everything but the kitchen sink, um, it is, it is puzzle pieces, right? It's fitting it together. But I think always have more plot than you are going to need because then you pull out everything that isn't. For um, The example I have is right now, I just wrote very quickly and very traumatically the sequel to Crave. And it is, it has to go in, it can be no longer than 704 pages because the shelves in Target will only hold two, and Walmart will only hold two of them. And they're already gonna be sticking out. If you hold out anymore, it's gonna fall over. Like they literally went and measured the shelves. And <laughs> that was, that was interesting. Um, so we had to cut, um, and I thought, I thought it, my editor and I both thought that we had a solid 800 pages that, that were uncuttable kind of a thing. So we really had to go in and, and parse out everything that, to, to get it down to 704 pages. And I think what it's done now is it's left us with a book where there is there isn't a lot of downtime, which is, which is a concern because you have to provide downtime too, but a book that the, the, the middle doesn't sag, is, which is, you know, the goal, right? Because we had so much that all we were left with was conflict and plot and, and twists and turns. So I think too much, yeah. And I, just wanted to, I just wanted to add to what Tracy was saying, um, having more conflict and more plot, as well as having extra puzzle pieces that you're never going to use, it's better and even though it might kill your soul a little bit to have to take stuff out, it's better and easier to take stuff out than having to put stuff in because then you're having to redo probably the entire story. So yeah, have more. More is better and then you can just shave it off later. Thank you. I mean, that's the whole concept of killing your darlings, right? Everybody's <laughs> heard that. Nobody wants to do it. I mean, I, I it, it makes me like frustrated. And, uh, and I think every, every single book out of what, 66 now, there's been something that I'm like, that has to go in the book. It doesn't make it in the book because you can't have everything, right? Right. Yeah. And it hurts. Sometimes it hurts a lot, but whatever makes the story better. Um, thank you. And so we're going to switch gears a little bit to the business side of publishing romance. And so romance is, I believe, the best selling genre in the world. Um, and so... Can you just talk about what it was like to have your books published and also maybe name some like best practices for either like you're pitching a romance or whatever it may be? Sasha, you go ahead. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, so uh, when I pitched The Trouble With Hating You, um, as I mentioned, I saw it more as just women's fiction mm -hmm. and it was picked up as a, as a rom-com and that's what it's, you know, um, that's what it sold as. So on the business side, I would say there is a lot of give and pull with every step of the way when you, when you start with an agent, when you get to the editor, when you're editing the book, um, there's always going to be something to change and something to compromise on. Um, not always, okay, a lot of the times. For me, it was a lot of the times. And for me, my books are based on a lot of, Indi they're all Indian characters. The main characters are Indian. And it used to be, um, you know, like five years ago, couldn't sell anything like that because it was this niche market and how are you going to market it and who's going to read this? And now there's definitely a lot more push for diversity. So on that side, it's good to see um, these changes in the industry. And I don't know what else to say. <laughs> um, I know that somebody had, had a question about what's the word count on a 704 page book? Uh, approximately 220,000 words. So three books <laughs> is the word count on a uh, on 704 page book. Um, as for uh, publishing and querying, um, 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 uh, see, we lost you for that first part of your answer. Oh, okay, about the, the length of the book? No, um, or once you the, the, book. Uh, the other part? Okay, as for like pitching and stuff, um, I think, I'm so sorry, I'm so sorry. Um, I think that, oh, this is a hard one because it's everybody's publishing journey is different. And I think, well, that's actually, I think the best advice I can give you is don't measure your publishing journey against anybody else's because everybody's is different and everybody's is hard in its own way. And especially the ones that seem easy at the beginning always be hard later. Um, publishing is this. 
it never, I've never seen it for anybody be this or be that or it goes like this. I think anybody who's been in the business long enough understand that. Um, I remember it was really interesting when my when my book came out in April. We were kind of like we you know put a my publisher put a ton of money into it, and we you know planned this gigantic launch and book tour and all of these things. And then COVID came along, and we literally had a week and a half to adjust. And a lot of people pushed their books out. We were like, we can't at this point. There's just no way. And so it was all about being flexible. But one of the um, online events I did was actually with a bookstore in San Diego called Mysterious Galaxy. And that was my hometown bookstore. It was where I'd grown up and um, kind of where I always wanted to sign. So the first time I ever got to sign for them several years ago was very exciting for me. And anyway, the, the moderator um, who was the manager of the bookstore, I would talk to him. He says, yeah, I was, you signed for us in like 2009. Like I have so many questions for you because there's just not that many people around who've been signed, you know, consistently publishing. Uh, Midlist, which is where I was for a lot of my career, um, for that many years, and and I was like, yeah, because you know, people, you, know, you end up like not making enough money. You end up like you have something traumatic happen in your personal life, and you can't write. There's like things happen, and and I think that, and I know this isn't really the business side of it, but I think that it's so important for you as a writer to understand that your journey is never going to be like you know how like in some careers you go in. And you just kind of, you do your career, and yeah, it may have little fluctuations like this, but in general, you're kind of, that's not what publishing is going to be like. Publishing will, will never be like that. It doesn't matter. I mean, this book here, I've suddenly got a, a major movie deal with Universal. We have a video game. We have all these other things happening, but it's book 65, and it's not the, the first book that, like, went big. I had books that went big in, like, 2015, and then kind of, you know what I mean? So you just kind of have to understand that that's what publishing does. It, it's never one straight straight shot. And that, I think, is, if you do that, I think you can hang in there. And um, if you know that, you can hang in there and, and go with the ups and downs. And even when it's bad, know that it's going to be good again. Yeah. Um, and Tracy, I'll stick with you. So, like, you've been in publishing romance for a very long time. Mm -hmm. um, I have a ton of books out. And the industry you know, it changes, you know, and mm -hmm. so where do you go to stay on top of the news that's coming out? Do you have any organizations that you recommend people join if they want to publish romance, like that kind of stuff? Um, that's like the hardest question right now because RWA completely imploded this year. Um, <laughs> because a year ago or two years ago, I would have told you to go to RWA. They have like great ways to train you in business, great ways to train you in writing all of these things and then you find out that actually you know there's a whole lot of horrible horrible stuff that was going on that, that a lot of us had no idea of mm -hmm. and are truly traumatized and I've actually resigned my RWA membership um, which was um, I think necessary but you know sad because I think it, it could have been such a great anyway this is, yeah. sorry. Um, I think writers like Texas is good I think there are I honestly think RWA was the best to learn stuff but there are a lot of writers who since then um, are giving a lot of great classes on stuff. I think the number one way to keep up with what's going on in the business is to read what's going on in the business. I mean, it's not about being on top of the next trend, but it's about knowing. Like right now, you know, it's been contemporary romance for a long time. Um, and now the shift is huge, right? We've gone into rom-coms and we've gone in tortured romance, uh, you know, right? Comedy. But now we've gone into rom-coms and we've gone mass into paranormal and it's been a straight shoot and it happens it happens every 10 years approximately and it's been about 10 years since the last time I published paranormal and mm -hmm. it's been about 10 years and then you know and it's just kind of how the market goes the contemporary romance right now um unless it's a rom-com not so much but think about it think about they called it um chiclet 10 years ago but it's really just rom-coms right and so we've all with the cartoony covers and all of that we're just coming right back around I think reading, staying on trend, um, talking to, finding a, a group of writers that you know and trust, and that's harder, I think, um, than it sounds. But there are, here in Austin, I don't know about the rest of Texas, but here in Austin, there are a ton of amazing writer groups that you can, you can not just Writers League, but like little informal ones. Um, writers League, obviously, is, is the best and biggest um, otherwise. Um, so I think, I think all of that helps. Where can you actually go? Publishers Weekly is always a good place to see what's going on. They start kind of hinting at what's going to happen and what they think is going on in the business. Um, but yeah, those are, those are my things. There's a great Texas organization called Fresh Fiction, 
um, that has a really great website and a really great blog and does a couple of really great um, conferences a couple times a year. And, uh, and they're also kind of a great place and they're, they're supermans, and they're a great place to kind of keep your, uh, your finger on the pulse of what, what's happening in romance. Thank you. Anything to add? Uh, no, not so much. I am very new to publishing and trying to get around. I'm, I still find it difficult just to meet people um, and other authors. So um, yeah, I'm taking notes myself. <laughs> well, thank you for being candid about that. I feel like all of us are just like, what, what are we doing? <laughs> you know? Yeah. Uh, but yeah, so we have, a me, I know almost all of them. So message me and I'll introduce you. <laughs> I will. You're in Austin, right? <laughs> I'm in Austin, Austin, Tracy. We need to we need to get together once COVID is yeah. is over or yeah. whatever happens. Once COVID is over, let's do it. Yes. Let's do it. Cool. Let's so do this it. will be um, the last question for our conversation before we head into the breakout rooms. But you know, a, a part of being a writer is reading what you're writing. And so, do you have any romance recommendations for our audience? And it could be just authors that you like reading or specific books too. Um, I like uh, The Bride Test and The Kiss um, in, the, in the first book. And then um, I've been reading... The Kiss yeah. Kudasha, right? Yes, yes, the yes. Oh, yeah. They're, so, oh They're so easy to read. I was like, oh, I need to take notes and learn something. And uh, the, um, the Boyfriend Project, that was my most recent read. And so um, I like to I like read more diverse books and characters that have different viewpoints than what I might be accustomed to so that I can understand a little bit better and to have more depth in the things that I'm reading. But um, those books are definitely um, my latest. Um, my favorite, if you're, if you're not looking for, um, if you're looking for something a little different than contemporary romance, Nalini Singh is a New Zealand author and she is amazing and one of my most favorite authors in anything and as we're going back into um it's recycling back into paranormal if that's something you're interested in reading i think picking up any of her series um especially her side changelings is incredible but she just put out my most recent read was a madness of a madness of sunshine which is a romantic suspense set in this um tiny town in new zealand and um it was awesome it was so good um i'm also a big christina lauren fan um, and also a huge Farrah Rashawn fan. She just had a new book. It's a boyfriend project, yeah, right? Yeah, that one, yeah. Yeah, Farrah Rashawn is a friend of mine, and she is amazing, and her books she are is. so good. And I, I also like to try, I'm trying to read as many diverse authors as I, as I can as well, because I think it's so important. Um, but yeah, um, those are some of my latest reads. Actually, I haven't read the boyfriend project yet. That is my reward for Literally, when the book goes to print in a week, we're doing final edits right now, and that's my reward. It's sitting right on my nightstand table for me to read. <laughs> cool. Well, thank you both so much. Um, so we're going to head into the breakout rooms.